Tech Games. Um, and I'm going to talk about why I think they're interesting and how you might try to make one, um, some inspirations. Uh, so I guess before I get into some examples of vignette games that exist, um, Ian Bogos wrote a really good article about vignette games like four years ago or so. Um, and I thought his definition of vignette um, in literature was really good. So I'm going to read that to you just to give you a sense of what a vignette is if you're not already familiar. Um, so he said that in literature, poetry, and film, a vignette is a brief, indefinite, evocative description or account of a person or situation. Vignettes are usually meant to give a sense of character rather than to advance a narrative. So I came to games from a literature and poetry background, um, and narrative vignettes are an interest of mine from back then. Um, and they're one of the things that sort of made the jump from being a poet to being a game developer. Um, so I want to give you an example of a vignette poem that I really like, just to give you a sense of what a vignette could be. Um, and it's by Langston Hughes. Uh, oh wait, so let me find it. I put in these slides up in order because I'm going to get it. Okay, so this poem is called Theme for English B. The instructor said, go home and write a page tonight and let that page come out of you, then it will be true. I wonder if it's that simple. I am 22, colored, born in Winston-Salem. I went to school there, then Durham, then here to this college on the hill above Harlem. I am the only colored student in my class. The steps from the hill lead down into Harlem through a park. Then I cross St. Nicholas 8th Avenue, 7th, and I come to the Y the Harlem Branch Y, where I take the elevator up to my room, sit down, and write this page. It's not easy to know what is true for you or me at 22, my age, but I guess I'm what I feel and see and hear. Harlem, I hear you. Hear you, hear me, we too, you, me, talk on this page. I hear New York too. Me? Who? Well, I like to eat, sleep, drink, and be in love. I like to work, read, learn, and understand life. I like a pipe for a Christmas present, or records, Bessie, Bop, or Bop. I guess being colored doesn't make me not like the same things other folks like who are other races. So will my page be colored that I write? Being me, it will not be white, but it will be a part of you, instructor. You are white. Yet, a part of me as I am a part of you. That's American. Sometimes, perhaps, you don't want to be a part of me, nor do I often want to be a part of you. But we are, that's true. As I learn from you, I guess you learn from me. Although you're older and white and somewhat more free, this is my page for English B. So that's one of my favorite vignette poems. Um, Thanks and he's really amazing. Um, so this poem is a, basically, my interpretation of it at least, is that it's a vignette of Hugh's experience writing a paper in a college English class, um, and it addresses some point issues of race and education, for example, among other things, of course. Um, so you might be wondering what kinds of games could be considered vignettes. Um, and some games that I looked at that came to mind are Anna Anthropy's Dysphoria, Jamie Antonise and Devin Johnson's Hush, and Stephen Lavelle's Slave of God. Um, so let me find the slides, they're all messed up. Okay, so this is Hush. Um, Hush is a game about a Rwandan Tutsi mother keeping her baby quiet in order to avoid discovery by Hutu soldiers. Short scene, building character. Um, another example is Slave of God, um, and this is a game about going to a nightclub. So it just takes place in one short night, and it's this, your individual experience in this club. Um, and finally, uh, Dysphoria, a game about Anna's experience um, with hormone replacement therapy um, and just like that whole process of yet of what that was like for her. Um, so I think that the power of vignette games lies in their embrace of individual experience. Often these games feel very personal. They're not necessarily concerned with perfect plot structures, complex mechanics, sprawling worlds or long hours of playtime. Not that any of those things are bad, it's just not what vignettes are about. Um, so they use mechanics and intimacy in order to explore the too frequently unexamined wrinkles in human experience. They don't need to make a statement or have a theme, although they, they can. They're exploratory or descriptive of a single concise experience. Um, and a lot of these games are quite short as well. Um, 
So you might be wondering how you may come up with your own vignette game, or you might be thinking of some ideas now. That's what I would hope. Um, something that works for me is to try and remember some specific memories that stick out in my mind as significant. Then I ask myself what's important about that memory, what sticks out to me. Um, and this is how I came up with the idea for How Do You Do It, which is a game I made with some friends a while ago. They have a picture. Um, so it's a vignette game about a little girl who's trying to figure out how sex works using her dolls. Um, it's something that had, it's a memory of mine that had always st stuck out as funny um, and silly, but also very interesting as a vignette of what it was like for me to be raised in a household where sex wasn't talked about. So you may be wondering what some other potential ideas for vignette games are, so I came up with a couple of my own. Um, you could make games about a ride on the school bus with your best friend in elementary school, a one night stand, receiving a letter from an old friend, a trip to the doctor's office, or hitching a ride and chatting with the driver. The possibilities are infinite, because it's all up to your individual experience or your own creative thoughts of small situations. I would also encourage everyone to read more poetry um, if they're interested in vignette games. I swear it'll help you realize that even the most mundane or small seeming situations, like putting on socks, a woman checking her mail, a grandfather sitting on a stoop or whatever, can be made interesting given some thoughtful design and context. Look at work by poets Frank O'Hara, Elizabeth Bishop, um, Langston Hughes, and William Carlos Williams. If you're more into novels, I'd recommend Virginia Woolf, especially Mrs. Dalloway. These are all writers that engage with vignettes um, throughout their work, and they're all quite good. Um, so let me know if you have any questions about other like kinds of vignettes you might want to check out from the literature world, um, or if you just want to chat. Um, that's all. Thank you. <laughs>